as long as you can see it, you can use your faith and the word of God to change it. These are the words of Charles Capps from the newest book release from Capps Ministries. Today, his daughter Annette is here on the program to discuss this important revelation, calling things that are not. I am so excited to have you here joining us today for this exciting uh, broadcast of Faith Builders with Michelle Steele. Welcome to the program, and I want you to join me in welcoming to our program Annette Caps from Caps Ministries. She is here today, and we are talking about the newest book release from Caps Ministries called Calling Things That Are Not. Welcome to the program, Annette Caps. Thank you. It's a joy to be here and share this message. I am so excited. It is a privilege and an honor to have you here. And I want you to know I am super excited about this book. And I want to tell you why, first of all, because two reasons. First of all, one of the first cassette tapes I ever <laughs> believed God for the money to buy. The first one I ever got was Faith Law of the New Covenant by wow. your dad. And then the second one was Calling Things That Are Not. And it had the picture of like a for sale sign yeah. outside of a house on the cassette tapes. And yes. my husband and I listened to that. We still have that cassette tapes. I should have brought it with me today. And so to know that you had taken that teaching and put it into book form is so exciting to me. And I don't know if you've heard this before, before, but I want to share this with you as well. I remember hearing Gloria Copeland talk about when her and Brother Kenneth were six million dollars behind in their television bill and they were seeking God. They were doing everything they knew to try to figure out what they could do to change it. And she says, we went on a motorcycle trip over one weekend and we took that cassette tape of Charles Capps calling things that are not. And she said, we listened to that, that whole ride. And when we got home, we knew what to do. And that changed their circumstance because it, in, even though they knew it, it invigorated them to hear him preach it again. I'm sure they had listened to him minister that message many times, but they listened to that and it was one of the things that helped them come out of that $6 million deficit they had in their ministry. So thank you for putting this into a book form. And so we're gonna be talking about this revelation that is here in this book, Calling Things That Are Not. And so I want you to tell me a little bit about what you shared in the introduction of this book and how you were moved to make this into a mini book. Well, I was moved to make it into a mini book because We've been convinced for years that this message needed to be out in book form. Yes. I mean, it's, it's uh, and on CDs, it's on MP3s, but it needed to be a book because you can carry these around. And the Lord had just really dealt with me that it needed to be out now. Do it now. I said, but how am I going to get this all together? And it just fell into place. Every part of it fell into place, including the design of the cover. And the Lord really spoke to me that this book was so important that it would actually end up changing more lives eventually than some of the other books that we had out. Praise God. So I'm excited to share this book today because I believe that this message of calling things that are not as though they are is what every Christian needs to hear. Yes. Because they pray and pray and pray, God help me, God meet my needs, God pay my bills, please God help me, I'm behind. And yet when they pray, they're saying I'm behind, I can't make, meet my bills. Every time I get ahead money wise, something terrible happens and then I have to turn around and spend all my money and I just can't get ahead. So, and so they repeat this to God. And like my dad said one time, God spoke to him when he was doing that and said, are you praying or complaining? <laughs> and he said, well, uh, uh, Lord, I guess I'm complaining. He said, well, I'd appreciate it if you quit telling me what the devil said. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's one so, of those moments that, that, what a transparent moment, but how much that helps us to know yeah. that's not prayer. That's, that's complaining. Right. And and so my dad, his life began to change as he started listening to the Spirit of God. And one of the ways it changed is his language began to change because he would say things, he was a farmer, and he'd say, if I plant a cotton seed, 
on that fence post with no soil. He said, there will be a weed that will come up and choke it out. That's how negative he was. Oh, my. And so things just were not good. But when the Lord began to show him through the word that he was calling things as they were, which was bad. Yes. The more you call things bad, the more you call yourself sick, the more you call yourself in debt, the more you call yourself anxiety written, the more you call yourself nervous, then you're reinforcing what is. And the only way to change what is, is by speaking the word and calling for what does not already exist. Yes. So in other words, my dad, he had a lot of debt on the farm. Uh, and one day I was walking through the house. I share this in the front of the book. I was walking through the house and he said, Annette, come in here. I, wanna, I want you to be a witness to something. So I said, oh, okay. So I walked in and the whole kitchen table was piled with papers and official looking things had been stamped by the county clerk. And he said, I want you to be a witness to what I'm about to do. And I said, okay. And so he pointed his finger at the mortgages, the promissory notes, everything on that table was debt in his life. Wow. And he owed a lot of money, a wow. lot of money. He pointed his finger at it. He said, debt, mortgages, I call you paid in Jesus' name. I call you paid in full, dematerialize, cease to exist. You're paid in full, in full for God meets all of my needs. And I, of course, talking about it, I tell it really very accurately in the book, but pretty much that's what he said. And then he just turned around, walked off. And I was left standing there and I'd seen him do some pretty weird things, but <laughs> I thought, well, okay. So I guess that's done. And you know, that's what he did. He walked off. It didn't look immediately, things didn't happen, but through a series of circumstances, he was able to sell some land, pay off other notes, and God just began to show him step by step how he could pay those debts off. And God moved in supernatural ways to number one, give him wisdom, yes. and number two, to move, and I believe it was angelic involvement, to move and to get things flowing so that all of those debts were paid off. Praise God. Now, I learned later that one of the things that he had called paid off was a subdivision where he developed, uh, built a couple of houses and the Lord had um, dealt with him that it was time to sell that to go full time in the ministry. And so he got to thinking about it, which is bad. <laughs> Once you've said it, let it stay said. Yes. He called those mortgages paid. He called what did not exist because they, that was debt. Yes but he called what did not exist, but then his mind began to turn and he started thinking, you know, what if, the what ifs. And so he just drove by those houses out in that subdivision one day. He rolled down the window and he yelled at them, ha, 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 you're so. <laughs> he rolled the window up and drove off. <laughs> now, you know, if anybody was watching him, they might think that he, you know, a brick short of a load, so to speak, but, it worked. I and heard it, him say that the Lord told him, you can release your faith in laughter. Yes, and that's you what he did. You can release your faith in laughter. And when he didn't have anything else that he could do, he had already made the statement of faith. He'd already yes. made the declaration. And so his action of faith at that point was to go that's and right. to laugh. That's right. And release, and that was the release of that's his faith. The words are so important, what you say, but the, also your actions. If you speak success and paying off your debt and getting out of debt, if you speak wholeness to your body, but then you turn around and you act in a different manner, for instance, you know, you prepare to fail. Yes. Then you're counteracting what you're saying. Your actions should fall in line with what you're saying. And you're, what you're saying is God supplies all of my needs. God is meeting my needs. I call that debt paid in Jesus name. And then what happens is, you let your words stay said, you support it with your actions, but you don't turn aside to the right or the left. Oh, what if that didn't work? What if, what if it doesn't happen? You don't, you, those thoughts will come to your mind, but you have to just keep on going straight. Yes. From what you've said, let your words 
stay said. I'm gonna share a personal example of, of this. Calling things that are not, and I'm sure we'll get into it in more depth though, calling things that don't exist. Most people have GPS's now in their car or just a handheld GPS or in your phone. And if you want to go to a destination, you set that destination in there. Yes. And if that destination is Chicago, you put Chicago in there, you punch the button, say that's where I want to go, and you just follow that. Yes. You don't change it, keep changing that around. You just put it in there and you let it stay said, so to speak. Yes. So my husband and I were flying back from the West and we had stopped in Amarillo, Texas. We have a small plane and I was flying. We'd taken off, just taken off from Amarillo after checking the weather. And they said, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine. You know, there's little low clouds right here, but everything's gonna be okay. So this is the flight service station, you know, from the FAA. So we took off and we got um, maybe 15 miles out of town and all of a sudden we're flying VFR, which means we have to be able to see the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we're flying VFR and all of a sudden the clouds get lower and lower and lower all directions. Now there were some tall towers, like television towers and different towers, you know, like about 2,000 feet. And so I couldn't go any lower. So my only option was to go in the clouds, to let to stay in the clouds. Now we're on visual flight rules. I called the flight service, they said, oh, it's, it only goes 10 miles, you know, of course what they didn't realize is we're about to go in the cloud. So I reach over and I say, well, it's better to stay in the clouds and stay away from the tower. So I punched the autopilot on mm -hmm. and that controlled the airplane in three dimensions. I didn't have to even touch it. It was now going to follow the GPS and go where I wanted it to go. And it was being controlled by the autopilot. So I'd sat there and just kind of watched to see when it cleared up, when I could see the ground. Well, I wasn't paying attention to my husband. And I turned and I looked at him and he was completely soaked in perspiration. He was white <laughs> as a sheet and I didn't have time to address it at the moment. But after we did come out, sun was shining. It was beautiful, not a cloud in the sky. And I looked at him and I said, honey, what is the matter? And he said, I thought we were going to die. And I said, why? He said, well, I was taught when I took flight training that a VFR pilot has exactly one uh, 90 seconds before they lose control of the aircraft and, and hit the ground and lose it, you know, they're dead. <laughs> what he didn't know is that I'd set the GPS and I had put it on autopilot. Yes. And all I had to do was sit there and wait until the sun was shining. Yes. This is how faith works. When you're calling things that are not, you're putting that destination. Complete health. That is so good. Health. That is such a good. Complete health. Yes free from debt, free from anxiety, peace in your marriage, you're putting that in that GPS. And then you're leaving it up to God because what you say will come to pass if you believe it. Yes. Then you put it on autopilot and you just sit back. Things may look bad, the clouds may come in, it may be stormy, it may look awful, but you have said it, you have called it. Yes put it on autopilot and let God do the rest. It's like J. Iris did when he set the course. He said, if you will come and lay your hands on my daughter, she will live. She'll be whole and she will live. Yes. And then they came and they told him, forget it. Your daughter's already died. What are you doing here? Don't bother yes. the master. And Jesus said, leave it on autopilot. Yes, <laughs> Just put it set on the autopilot. autopilot and yes. stay with the course you've already set. That is a perfect yes. illustration. And your dad always emphasized in his teachings that these aren't things, we're not, we're not, these aren't just positive confessions of things that we want that are not founded on the word. These are things that God has already promised us. We're taking the promises yes. and setting them as our GPS. That's right. As our destination, as our course. And we're calling things that God has already said belong to yes. us and that are ours healing for our body, uh, the, the, the well-being of our marriage, our salvation of our children, the, the financial stability of our lives. These are things that God has already said belong to us. Yes. And so what a great illustration. And, and your dad always emphasized as well, this is God's method. God chose this method. Yes. And that's why we choose this method. 
That's right. That we know from Romans chapter four that it says, God who calls those things which be not as though they were, which is the foundation yes. of this book. So yes. this is God's method. Yes. He calls those things that be not as though they were past tense. Yes. As though they already exist because they, al they do already exist. Yes. And this is the, the principle we really need to understand. And that is everything we see in the natural world, everything here in the studio, this book, this, these things were all created from the unseen realm. Yes. They were called forth from the realm that is not visible. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Yes. And then verse three, it says, by faith we understand the words were, f the worlds were framed by the word of God. So they were framed by what? The word. The word of God. Can you see a word? Not unless it's written. It's a vibratory essence, the yes. word. You can't see that. It's a vibratory essence. The worlds were framed by the word of God so that those things that appear were not made by things that are visible. So everything in the visible realm was created by the invisible realm. Yes. And so therefore everything that is in the visible realm, the Bible says is temporal. It is subject to change. Everything you see in your life is subject to change. Yes. Everything. Sometimes in a split second, things in your life are subject to change. But the, the real important principle here, the spiritual principle is that we take our words, what you cannot see, we take our thoughts, our beliefs, our faith, and we direct it toward putting that dialing that into that GPS, we're directing it, we put it in there, and then it becomes visibly manifest, just like this book did. Yes. And so, interestingly enough, can you believe it? The word worked, and all of my dad's <laughs> debts were paid off. He confessed healing. He used to have a terrible uh, problem with this poison ivy. He began to confess and began to say it. One of the reasons you confess the Word of God is because you want to get it in your heart so that you do believe it. Yes. Because the Word of God says if you believe that what you say comes to pass, then it will happen. If you don't believe it, then what are you doing? You're still saying it because you're putting it in your heart. Yes. So that then you believe it. And finally, he became so convinced by confessing the Word in his body he became so convinced he was healed of reacting to that poison ivy that he actually eventually was able to grab it and rip it off of a tree and it didn't affect him at all. I do not advise anybody to do that <laughs> unless you have confessed the word, but he became strong in it. That's why you have to speak, when you speak to your situation, if you have anxiety, a lot of people today are just overrun with anxiety and fear, and you speak peace. I call peace into my life. I call peace into the situation. I speak calmness. Yes. And you begin to quote the Word of God. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I abide under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Yes. That actually means I stake my claim in the secret place, in the tent of the Most High God. Well, if you're there, what can hurt you? That's right. You stake your claim there. I yes. put my claim there. That's where I dwell every day. And when you do these things and you say them and you believe them, you produce the energy of faith all the way around you. Yes. In your, in, your entire personal space, in your house, in your workspace, because the Word of God is powerful. Call it. Call it like you want it, not like it is. So the calling it is not negating the circumstance, it's calling for the thing that you want to be made manifest. That's right. And the, the calling is like if you wanted to, if you wanted the dog, you'd call the dog. If you want the cat, you'd call the cat. If you want the healing, call the healing. Instead of like you said at the beginning of the program, saying, Lord, I'm in trouble. Lord, I'm in debt. Lord, my finances are falling apart. And that in that prayer, they're establishing the end results in the negative direction. 
That's right. And the thing that's also important is that we're not denying what exists in the natural and saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. That's lying. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, denying what exists, there's no power in that. There's power in the Word. Yes. See, in the realm of the Spirit, we are whole, we are healed, we are well, we are strong, we are powerful. Yes. That's what the Word of God teaches us. So where people get kind of messed up here is they say, yeah, but look, look at me. I'm not really healed. No, but in the realm of the Spirit you are. And if you can see yourself in the realm of the Spirit, what God provided, if you can see that, and you say, this sickness has no power over me, but the Word of God does. Yes. The Word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Therefore, I call wholeness to me. Yes. I call health to me. I'm not calling arthritis. I'm not calling these other things. I'm calling health. Yes, you can take the Word and change it. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the Word of God, that things that He has promised us, the desire that He has for our life, and bringing them into manifestation through the process of faith. You know, maybe you're watching today and you are are not in a position where you've ever received Jesus as Lord. And all of the things that we're talking about today are available to the believer through our position in Christ. And I wanna give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord today because He's the one, He paid the price on Calvary. He died the death to free you so that you could have His life. He purchased and redeemed us through the shedding of His blood and the laying down of His life on Calvary. If you're watching me today, I just want you to open your heart and pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus died in my place. I believe that you raised him from the dead. And today, I ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe that God raised him from the dead and that you confess his lordship over your life, that you are saved. The salvation of Jesus Christ is a total life salvation. He'll change every area of your life, even making available to you these truths that we were talking about today, the ability to take the Word of God and change that impossible situation because with God, nothing shall be impossible. But for him that believes, all things shall be made possible. You can operate in the faith of God through the Word in your heart and in your mouth. That's the plan that God has for you. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Please watch us next week because Annette is gonna be with us again next week and we're gonna talk more about these things that God is re has revealed and it has put in this book, Calling Things That Are Not. I wanna remind you to build your faith and to frame your world by the Word of God. We have been given the power of words, but unless we open our mouths, that power is rendered useless. The principle of calling things that are not as though they were is the spiritual principle through which everything physical becomes manifest. In the Calling Things Media Package, you will receive Pastor Michelle's CD series, You've Got to Say Something, and in addition, Charles Capps' mini book, Calling Things That Are Not. This package is specifically selected to help you understand the power of your words and how you can speak in faith those things you are believing for. To order the Calling Things package, call us at 1-800-516-8082 or order online at michellestillministries.com. You can also write us at P.O. Box 452 DeSoto, Kansas 66018. Jesus is the Anointed One. His anointing is the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power. He declared in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit 
of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus is declaring, the anointing is upon me. The anointing is upon me. And the very first thing that he declares the anointing is upon him to accomplish is the preaching of the good news, the gospel to the poor. Well, let me ask you today, what is good news to a person who is poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. Jesus came anointed by God to set at liberty the people who were in bondage to poverty. Poverty is under the curse. Poverty is never God's plan for his people. His plan for you is the blessing. And so Jesus is anointed. He said in Galatians chapter 3 that if you belong to Jesus Christ, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs of the blessing. Jesus Christ connects us to the blessing of God, which disconnects us from the curse. As believers, we have to put our faith in that blessing and we have to act activate that blessing as we enter into his system way of seed time and harvest. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 tells us this, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it. The blessing it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That's good news to the poor that you are blessed in Christ Jesus. And through that blessing, you can begin applying that blessing to your finances. He also says this in Psalm chapter 68 and verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. The good news to the poor is that you don't have to be poor anymore. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to raise up a resistance against lack. I want you to begin driving it out of your life by filling your life with the blessing. Blessed every day, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with his benefits. As you sow into this ministry this week, I wanna declare the blessing over you. Father, you said that when we give, we are blessed, that we are blessed and receive a multiplication, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You cause that seed to come back in the form of a harvest. And Lord, I pray for every sower this week to receive of that good measure, pressed down, shaken together, abundant flow that you desire through your blessing to manifest in their lives. We receive it by faith, Lord, in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this week and thank you for being a faith builder. Thank you for being a faith builder. Together we are spreading God's word across the world through television, print, and the internet. In addition, your giving will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your partnership. If you are in the Little Rock area, we invite you to visit us at Faith Builders Little Rock. We meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. at 10500 West Markham Street, Suite 110 in Little Rock. For more information, you can call us at 501-404-2344 or go to faithbuildersinternational.com. Come join us and be a part of what God is doing in Little Rock.